It's been a long night, and Cancun, the Mexican paradise, wakes up with a hangover. Failure. The Africans have achieved nothing. It's time for reactions and analysis. My first reaction was anger. I was really disappointed because I know people, farmers, who were led to believe that their situation would be dealt with in Cancun in the most objective way possible and that a solution would be found to solve their problems. More and more people are wondering, what do we gain by being part of a consensus which is always reached at our expense? Even within the WTO, some people are wondering, what do we gain by being part of a consensus when that consensus offers nothing to our countries, even when we're absolutely right. If diplomacy fails, we don't have war in the conventional sense, but we have a breakdown of international law and order, we have a breakdown in the rules, power alone will determine what the results are. This is not a happy situation for small countries. Uh, countries like Burkina Faso and Chad producing cotton, this is a very serious situation. I think Dr. Superchai made a mistake in the negotiations when he said, well, it's not my role, but I have to say that this is a problem we must solve and I'll see to it personally. Unfortunately, that's not the role of the Director General of the WTO. And I'm sure that the Americans reminded him that he did somehow go beyond his duties. And the Americans probably used pressure tactics and maybe forced him to respect the wording that they wanted for the final text rather than what the Director General wanted. At the last moment, when he felt that he didn't have the support of the Europeans, he backtracked. But in a way, the Europeans are responsible for that. If they had been firm, if they had been sincere with the Africans, I'm sure the Americans wouldn't have pushed matters so far. I don't think it was a failure. The situation has shaken up a lot of people. If a small village football team plays a great professional team and it's a draw, you can't say the village team lost. The Africans may not have achieved anything, but they haven't given anything away either, and they will probably strike again in a few months' time. Europe and the United States have won the first battle in the Cotton War, but have only managed to postpone the final outcome. The subsidies system has been seriously shaken, and the cracks now seem irreversible. Ten months after Cancun, the eyes of the entire cotton industry are fixed on Geneva. A new round of farming negotiations has just started at the WTO, and cotton is once again at the center of the debate. After the resounding failure of the Cancun summit, some doubt the WTO's capacity to manage this kind of discussion and find acceptable solutions. Tim Groza, the chair of the debate, tries to reassure the critics. Now, this is only the second attempt we've had multilaterally to address the huge distortions that you see, not just in cotton, but in sugar, in dairy products, in beef. You can go through the whole gamut of, of, of issues. So what I've done is I've restructured the negotiation, essentially to deny the negotiators the opportunity of spending their time making speeches at me, because that ain't going to solve the problem. They've got to engage amongst themselves. Well, in my heart, I have to believe we'll get there, and rather than fail because the consequences of failure of these global negotiations uh, would be uh, catastrophic. 
The ministers of Mali, Chad, Benin and Burkina Faso are in Geneva. For them, it's the last attempt at negotiation. By now, small African producers are devastated and won't survive another failure. People must put themselves in our place because it's a question of survival for our producers and also for the economy of our countries. It's hard to say whether the pressure came from public opinion, the media or the government. In any case, after spending a year saying the opposite, the Americans at last seem willing to admit that subsidies do distort the cotton market. What the Americans are willing to do, and I think what we must capitalize on, is recognize that it's a problem that must be solved and that we have to find a specific and ambitious solution. Unfortunately, the solution is likely to be a very, very low common denominator. That means that the problems, instead of being solved today, will be postponed until the end of the negotiations. After five days of negotiations and a few sleepless nights comes the agreement. It means both nothing and a great deal. Nothing because there is no concrete decision, yet a great deal because the final resolution accepted and signed by all says that cotton will be addressed ambitiously, expeditiously and specifically. The problem has finally been acknowledged by all parties who have committed themselves to finding a solution by December 2005 at the end of the negotiating round. Africa doesn't have the time to wait. It can't wait. But I think that temporary measures are being taken. The North says it's willing to support agriculture and cotton in Africa during this intermediate phase. And the cotton exporters, they may not have a great deal of personal or practical experience in the past in negotiating, but they have enormous amount of goodwill available to them. Everybody understands that this negotiation will not be finished successfully without an outcome that moves this forward in this area of cotton. The issue of cotton has not yet been completely solved, but all those involved are now in favor of a settlement that no longer penalizes the African countries. The 31st of July 2004 will be a date to remember in the history of world trade, because for the first time small countries succeeded in making two of the most powerful world economies give in. I think we're seeing a new Africa. A new African vision. Africa wants to take its place in international trade. And after having been left out in the cold during previous negotiations, Africa wants to turn the tide in its favor. Developing countries everywhere are slowly realizing that participation in the international trading system is a sine qua non for development. And in the long term, I, I see the future as being rather clear, actually. This is, we're moving into a world which will be dominated by developing countries. Now, develop in terms of trade, no question about that. Developed countries may not like that, but that's the reality. <laughs> Mm-hmm.